Give it a few minutes, Judge. All right, good morning. The court is going to call cause number 2021-523-416. This is Annie Paulson versus Danny Driver. We are allowing Zoom hearing today because some of the out-of-town attorneys felt that it would be a short hearing, so we're accommodating everyone. Uh, I think we're here today on a status, find out the status of this case and get it, what needs to happen before trial. Would you please identify yourself and your client for the record. Uh, Your Honor, Brian Dutton for the plaintiff, Annie Paulson, and we are, she's appearing via Zoom and we're present and ready, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Dutton, thank you. Uh, this court does require ties for attorneys appearing in the courtroom. Uh, do you have a tie with you today? Um, yes, Judge, somewhere. Let me, let me find that. Excuse me one second. All right. Well, you're putting on the tie, then uh, let's continue. Dusty Rhodes, representing defendant Danny Driver, who is not present today. I filed a motion to withdraw as attorney of record, which is what I would like to discuss today. Now. All right. Billy Barrister, representing defendant Farmer State, present ready. I thank you all for appearing. Are there any issues that we need to take up uh, first? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, there's been an issue that's come up lately that we did not anticipate. So Mr. Barrister and his client this morning filed a motion to designate a responsible third party. We're completely surprised by that. And we're going to object to that because of this late date is not being timely. Also, I haven't received any copy of any motion to withdraw by Mr. Rhodes. Mr. Barrister, you're muted. Would you please unmute your phone? Turn your microphone on. Sorry, Judge. As I was saying, I believe under Chapter 33 of the Civil Practice and Remedies Code, I'm entitled to designate a responsible third party for this accident by filing an amended pleading and designating a third party. This comes as no surprise to the plaintiff, as we have discussed. All right, counsel, you're going to have to speak one at a time. Uh, Court reporter cannot record who is speaking, and because you're not in the courtroom, I can't direct this without your cooperation. So, Mr. Barrister, if you will continue, please. As I was saying before I was interrupted, we have learned that a third party cut in front of our insured, which results in which resulted in the collision between Ms. Dutton's client and Mr. Driver. Uh, this is not new information to Mr. Dutton. Okay, so, Judge, this lawsuit's been on file for nearly two years. Mr. Barrister's known about a third party for some time. I guess I might have discussed it with him, but I did not agree to this back then, and I certainly do not agree to it now. Mr. Rhodes, do you have a dog in this fight? Judge, I, I don't. Judge, I have a, a Danny driver who has joined in the waiting room. All right, please, please allow him to. Happened to Mr. Rhodes. Um, hey, Doug, can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Hey, buddy, get out of the way. Mr. Driver, I can, I hear, I can hear Do you yeah, have a... I, I, I was in traffic, Judge. Sorry, I couldn't join a Zoom while I was driving, but now I'm driving and I'm not in traffic. All right. Would you please turn your camera on? No, uh, let me uh, let me see if I can figure out how to do that, Judge. Uh, let me act like this is the first time I've ever used a Zoom. Uh, okay, hold on. Uh, how about that? Is that it right there? Can you see anybody? Right. right. Are you, Mr. Driver? Are you are you driving? Uh, yeah, Judge. I'm I'm late for an appointment, and there's a Dr. Phil marathon going on. I don't want to miss it. All right. I'm, I'm going to ask that you pull over to the side of the road and and not be driving while we're having this hearing. Do you understand me? Uh, uh, yes, Judge. Sure. I'd, I'm going to be late for my appointment, but OK, that's fine. All right. All right. W welcome back, Mr. Rhodes. As you were saying. Sorry, Judge. Uh, I don't know what happened. I was there and then I wasn't. It's the darndest thing. Uh, 
anyways, I filed this motion to withdraw as attorney of record for defendant Danny Driver due to his ability, due to his inability to communicate and with Mr. Driver so that he could assist in his defense. In this case, we've attempted to comp him numerous times, and he has been advised three times of his right to object to my withdrawal. He's been notified of this hearing and again reminded of his right to object to my withdrawal. I've not received any communications with him with regard to whether or not he agrees or objects to my withdrawal. And as far as I know, he's not here today. So we moved the court to. Well, while you were gone, your client has joined us. So he is here with us now. Well, I'll be. I've been trying to contact him for weeks. Hello, Danny. Mr. Driver, you, Mr. you need Rhodes. Are you are you still driving, Mr. Driver? No, no, Judge. It's just my car has got bad shocks. And it's still I, – I turned my camera, too, so you can see me better. Well, thank you. But I, I want you to, to not be operating the vehicle during this hearing. All right. Mr. Rhodes, do you have any objection to Mr. Barrister's motion to designate a responsible third party? Your Honor, I, I want to be allowed to withdraw. I'm going to call back in the hearing. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, Mr. Rhodes, we'll get to your motion to withdraw in a few minutes. Right now, I need to know if you have any objection to Mr. Barrister's motion. Judge, quite frankly, I believe that the third party is entirely responsible for this case, and I hope that you let that scandal end this case. Hey, I told you I didn't do it. So uh, why are you wanting to get off my case? Why don't you want to represent me now? Well, hold on, Mr. Driver, just a minute. All right. I believe that Mr. Barrister has the right to designate a responsible third party, and I'm going to allow it. So if you'll prepare an order and get that to me. Uh, Your Honor, I believe that uh, I believe that this is going to delay the trial and unnecessarily uh, cause an injustice to my client. Does that mean that I'm, I'm not going to get my money? I've been waiting a long time and you told me they were going to pay me. OK, uh, hold on, Annie. We can talk after the hearing. Judge, if Mr. Rose gets to withdraw, can I get a court-appointed attorney? You know, a really good one. Even though I don't have any money to hire an attorney, I want the best one you can give me for free. All right, Mr. Rose, what what is behind your motion to withdraw? And I'm not sure everyone has seen your motion. I haven't seen it. And this is definitely a total surprise to me. Just a minute, Judge. Uh, here you go. I haven't seen this motion either. Judge, I, I can't read that. This may as well be his lunch menu for all I know. Mr. Rhodes, did you e-file that? Because I haven't seen the motion either, nor am I able to read it from your camera. Uh, my craft staff uploaded a few minutes ago, right, Molly? I faxed it already, but e-filed the message already. I'll now, that, Judge. All right, for now, I'm, I'm not going to consider your motion to withdraw as none of us have seen it, and I'll set it for another time after the parties have had a chance to review and respond to it. Do you hey, understand Judge, that? Judge, does this mean you're going to appoint me a, a new lawyer? All right, Mr. Driver, this is a civil matter, and you're not entitled to appointed counsel. I, I'm sure that Mr. Rhodes can explain that to you. Not if he doesn't answer my phone calls, I can't. Well, if he gets a court appointed attorney, how come I don't get one and I have to pay for somebody? And when am I going to get my money? Annie, please, we will talk in a few minutes. All right. All right. Is there anything else today? Mr. Dutton? Uh, Judge, do we need to go ahead and get a new scheduling order in light of you allowing Mr. Barrister to designate a new responsible third party? I can circulate a new schedule, Judge. When can I get my hearing on my motion to withdraw? All right. Mr. Barrister, if you will, put together a new scheduling order and get signatures from all the attorneys of record, including anyone that might appear for the third party. Yes, sir. And Mr. Rhodes, you will need to contact my coordinator and get a date for your motion to withdraw. And at that time, we will consider any issues that you have with your representation of Mr. Driver. Will do, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Dutton, anything further? No, Your Honor. Mr. Rhodes? Nothing, Your Honor. Mr. Barrister? Nothing from us, Your Honor. All right. Hey, nothing from me either, sir. Wait, All right. when are we going to court? Hold on. When are we going to court? 
All right, Ms. Paulson and Mr. Driver, your attorneys are going to visit with you, I hope, in the very near future to answer those types of questions. Uh, but but thank, well, Mr. Driver's gone. So, but thank you all for being here. And uh, uh, if there's nothing further, then we will be adjourned and you're excused. Thank you. When COVID hit, we became very familiar with Zoom and other forms of uh, communication with our clients, with our attorneys, with our judges and our courts. And what has grown into a now commonplace in many courts has kind of evolved from a chaotic hearing place like we've had this morning into something that's a little more refined, but there are still many problems that we have. One of them is the courtroom decorum uh, is lacking. One of them is that there are always technical issues with uh, cameras or microphones. There are always issues when you don't are not sitting next to your client uh, with client control, uh, with communication issues before the Zoom hearing or preparing your client for the hearing, especially when it's evidentiary and you're uh, trying to communicate with the court and with a witness uh, via camera, or you've forwarded documents to the court uh, for the court to be aware of that the, that the client is going to be testifying from or things like that. And I think one of the important things uh, that I hope that you will learn from our short comical presentation here, uh, or chaotic really presentation, is that as a judge, it's very difficult to herd cats in a Zoom hearing. And no cats appeared today, by the way. Secondly, it is difficult for the contentious hearings because people are wanting to jump up and object and it's hard to control and, and our technology is not such, uh, has not advanced such that a lot of times different microphones click in and click out when someone else is speaking. And so someone can be talking, somebody objects to it. So you have competing microphones for trying for the same space and the conversations are uh, mostly uh, intelligible in, you know, I think the important thing is you have to learn in the courtroom and on Zoom that you can't talk over one another. The uh, third thing is that the, uh, the clients that are at home do not have the same reverence for the courtroom that they have when they walk in to the courtroom. Uh, as you saw, the plaintiff was at home, the TV was on, there was uh, background noise, <laughs> excuse me, there was um, distractions, and I think that Erica did a great job in, in showing that type of client that is left unattended at home and trying to be part of a, uh, a serious courtroom hearing. Uh, Danny Driver, Paul did a great job of, of acting as the client who is in his car, who is unaware of any uh, decorum that is, that is expected by the court. His lawyer, uh, Mr. Rhodes, by Sam Vanderpool did a great job of, of trying to communicate with the with the court and then telling me that his client is not available and then he shows up and he is available. And they have their own dialogue going on between them as, as Mr. Dutton or Cole Shooter had with uh, Annie, his client. Uh, a lot of times these kinds of things have happened in Zoom hearings that I've been involved in or that I've heard of. Uh, there's always uh, the issues with the cell phone uh, cameras because if it's turned vertically, 
you have a black line down each side and the, the picture is very narrow. If you turn it horizontally, then you have a full screen and you saw some of these uh, individuals that were on their cell phones were able to uh, kind of manipulate their, their presence, so to speak, in the courtroom. And that's distracting as well. The important thing is when you go to a Zoom hearing, please try to have client control. Please try to have your arguments set out so that they can succinctly be presented to the court. Other parties can hear them and uh, we can make rulings and have more orderly Zoom hearings. Uh, in my court, we are still having some Zoom hearings. Obviously, when there are out of town attorneys and we're having a 10 minute status conference uh, or issue, their presence isn't necessary in the courtroom, but we would expect them to show the proper decorum and the respect for the court, even though they're not present in the courtroom. I hope this has been helpful and uh, thank you. And now we'll continue with our presentation. Have a great day.